This is a companion video to the Be Credible textbook on search and corrections databases. We will cover five different databases in this one video. They will be the Sheriff's Office Arrest Log, the County Jail Inmates Database, the State Prison Inmate Database, the Federal Prison Inmate Database, and the Public Offender Registry. These databases can come in handy when searching for information on individuals. Some of the databases list only those who are currently in one of the correction systems, while others list those who are in currently or who were in the system previously. As with the other county or state databases that we have looked at, this video will cover the databases for Douglas County and the state of Kansas. If you are interested in searching for individuals in other counties or other states, you need to find equivalent databases that cover those jurisdictions. Let's start with the Sheriff's Office, which in Douglas County keeps records of recent arrests and a database of who is held in the county jail. I first search for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and proceed to the Sheriff's website. There are two links here that we will explore. The first one is the booking recap, which you can find underneath the services tab. The office requires registering for an account to view its records. Registering is free and will only take a minute. After registering for an account and opening the booking recap again, we are presented with a page that asks us to select the time frame we would like to view records for. Let's say we want to view records from the past 24 hours. I plug in 2.11 p.m. on June 22nd, which was yesterday, and the current date and time, which is 2.11 p.m. on June 23rd, and click OK. We are then presented with three pages of six arrest records in chronological order for the past 24 hours. Let's now take a closer look at one of these records. I first see the time of the booking and the individual's name, date of birth, and address. On the next line, there is a code for the arrest type, the arresting officer's name, the location where the arrest happened, and the arresting agency. In this case, this looks like the Lawrence Police Department. Then there is information about the alleged offense and the date of when the offense happened. At the bottom, we have information about the bond and whether it was paid. The fact that this database is only searchable by date is problematic. We can't type in a name to see if the sheriff has a record of a particular person. But if we know the date of an incident that involved an arrest, we can then definitely get more information about it in these records. The next database covers the county jail. The sheriff's office runs the jail, so we get to the database from the sheriff's homepage. What we get is a 10-page list of every inmate currently being held in the county jail. We have information on the inmates' names, date of birth, age, race, sex, hair, and eye color, and location. We get no information on the inmates' offenses or how long they expect to be in the county jail. At the bottom of the final page, we get a current count of the jail population, which today is 143. The next database we can search is the State Level Inmate Directory. This database will show us information about inmates who are currently in the state system, that is, they have been convicted of state crimes, and also those who were incarcerated before but no longer are. To get to the database, we look for the Kansas Inmate Search. We read and agree to the disclaimer. Next, we have options for searching by name or by the prisoner number. We also have an option to display the inmates' photos. Perhaps the most infamous prisoner in Kansas is Dennis Rader, otherwise known as the BTK killer. So let's type his name in the search. After passing through a Google verification test, we get to the record. Because we asked for it, we have Raider's photo and basic information, his names and aliases, his birth date, physical characteristics, his release date, in this case it's 2180, his current location, which is the prison in El Dorado, Kansas. Then we have a list of his convictions, and there are several, where he has been held, and a disciplinary record. Like I said, we can also search for individuals who are no longer incarcerated. Let's just type in the most common last name, Smith, which returns a list of current and previous inmates. Let's look at Aaron Smith, whose status is discharged. We have some information about this former inmate, including what he was convicted of and his release date. So with this information, you could do a partial background check 
to see if a person you are researching ever spent time in a Kansas state prison. The next database is the federal inmate database. So these are individuals who were convicted of federal crimes. Let's look for the federal database and enter it. We have fields for searching by name or inmate number. One current inmate that I know of is Martin Shkreli, better known as Pharma Bro the former CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals, who made headlines for raising the price of a prescription drug by more than 5,000%. I enter in his name and search for it. As with the state database, we see his location and release date. We also see that this database is less informative than the state database. We don't see his convictions, for example, or his mugshots. The department also holds information on former inmates. One former inmate that I know of is Joe Giudici. He is the husband of a Bravo housewife of New Jersey, Teresa Giudici. Joe is Italian, so he spells his name the old country way, Giuseppe Giudici. We search for him and find out that he was released in March of last year. The last database we will search is the Public Offender Registry. This database contains information about four types of registered offenders sex offenders, violent offenders, and drug offenders. We can search this database by name or by a geographical area. A geographical search can be useful for someone who is considering moving into a particular neighborhood. So let's do a geographical search for the area north of campus. So let's type in 11011 Mississippi, which is just east of Memorial Stadium. Lawrence, Douglas County, Kansas 66044. And what comes up is a map centered around this address. Each of these pins indicates the residence of a registered offender, and the offenses are color-coded. Once we select an offender in whom we are interested, we can click on their name and view more information about who they are and the details of their conviction. So to summarize, in this video we covered five different databases that allow us to search for individuals who have come into contact with the various correction systems. At the county sheriff's level, we looked at jail booking information and the jail population. At the state and federal levels, we searched for inmates who are either currently serving time or who did so previously. And we looked at the offender registry, which you can search by name or geographically for individuals who had been convicted of certain violent, sex, or drug crimes. As always, the county and state databases are specific to those jurisdictions, so you need to find the respective database you want to use. And remember that these databases will work differently from one case to the next. And before I leave you, remember also that this tutorial was filmed in June of 2020. Because of how often corrections records are updated, your results and findings may be different from mine by the time you view this video. But whenever you view this video, I wish you happy and productive searching.